Hi everyone, my name is Jaylee Tribble. I'm Toby Stipp. And today we're going to be presenting to you the effects of Rose's Law on jury decision making under supervision of our mentor, Dr. Christopher Peters. Rose's Law was officially passed to change the terminology for mental retardation to intellectual disability, and this change was recorded in the newest edition of the DSM. According to the DSM, individuals with intellectual disability suffer from different deficits, including lack of reasoning, abstract thinking, and judgment. What's important to note here is that the characteristics are the same for mental retardation, so the only change has been the terminology itself. Past research has also found that because of these deficits, these individuals are more easily swayed by coercion. In a past study conducted by Peters, Hitchcock, and Strait, the researchers were interested in the effects of using different terminology for the disorder on jury decision-making specifically. And they were particularly interested in the effect of this in cases of coercion, knowing that past research has found that intellectually disabled people are more susceptible to it. And what the researchers found is that when heavily coerced, a defendant who is labeled with intellectual disability as opposed to mental retardation was more likely to be found guilty by mock jurors. So the present research is essentially a replication of this study in order to determine if views of guilt have changed since the original study was conducted and it now being 10 years since the passing of Rose's Law. Our study included 162 undergraduate students. Due to campus closure, we were unable to run and analyze data from the remaining 267 original students. Our main age was 19 years. We had predominantly female, predominantly Caucasian. We had a two by three between subjects factorial. Our independent variables were diagnosis, terminology, and coerciveness. We also had one dependent variable, which was the likelihood of granting a guilty verdict. For our procedure, we gave participants a fictional trial summary, which included a chat room conversation between the defendant and an undercover agent. The defendant was either labeled with intellectual disability or mental retardation, and the agent either heavily, mildly, or did not coerce the defendant to agree with meeting with them in person to have sex. Afterwards, we gave a questionnaire to the participants, which included two manipulation checks, demographic questions, and asked the participants to rank on a scale of one to seven, the likelihood that they would grant a guilty verdict to the defendant. For our study, we ran a two-way factorial analysis of variance. For diagnosis terminology, we found a marginally significant main effect. Although there was no statistical significance, we do see a difference between the two terminologies. We also found a significant main effect on a, a coerciveness on likelihood of voting guilty. Specifically, we found that participants were less likely to vote guilty when a defendant was heavily coerced than when a defendant was mildly coerced or not coerced at all. Finally, we found a marginally significant interaction between terminology and coerciveness. Specifically, we found that a defendant labeled with intellectual disability was more likely to be found guilty than if labeled with mental retardation in the mild coercion condition. Overall, the results obtained in this study were similar to those obtained in the original study. In particular, when the defendant was labeled with intellectual disability as opposed to mental retardation, they were more likely to be found guilty by mock jurors. Now, contrary to the original study, this effect occurred when the defendant was mildly coerced, and this is likely due to participants seeing heavy coercion on part of law enforcement as unacceptable and negative, uh, despite the type of disability. Now, there are some limitations present as well. As indicated earlier, our results are only based on a portion of the data that was collected, and we believe that if we had been able to run analyses on the entire data set, then some of our marginal effects would have actually reached significance. In addition, using a convenient sample, such as college students, is not representative of the entire population of people that serve on juries. In addition, our sample was predominantly female, so it is possible that gender differences could have affected the results.
The present research supports the notion that people remain unaware of the interchangeability between intellectual disability and mental retardation. And as a result, people commonly associate the two terms with different disorders. Treatment of people based on the terminology used is thus different. Future research should attempt to address the limitations that were previously discussed, as well as examine the different subject variables that had some imbalances, perceptions of law enforcement officials in regard to coercion, and seeing if an educational strategy in regard to the terminologies could actually help to eliminate some of these differences. Thank you for listening. And please be safe.